Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the binomial distribution. Now the aim of this tutorial is to show you what a binomial distribution is and the notation that we use. Now the binomial distribution has four properties and the best way of demonstrating this is by way of tree diagrams. And the first tree diagram I'm going to show you is that of throwing a dart till you get a bullseye. You can throw the dart into the dartboard, you either get a bullseye or you don't. And if you get a bullseye, I'm going to stop throwing the dart. So I carry on to my second throw and I either get a bullseye or I don't get a bullseye. And so on. Now I could keep throwing the dart at the dartboard and never, in theory, get a bullseye. So this tree diagram would go on and on and on forever and ever. It would have what we call an infinite number of trials. Trials are these sections in between the dotted lines here. They represent in this particular example the first throw, the second throw, third throw and so on. So what is the first property for a binomial distribution? Well it is that we have a fixed number of trials, n. And so this particular model would not fit a binomial distribution because, as I say, it's got an infinite number of trials. So let's have a look at another tree diagram which has a finite number of trials, a fixed number of trials. And here's one. We've got the playing of two football matches. I've got my fixed trials. Each one represents a match. This is the first match and the second match. And then you'll notice that what I've got here is that in any match you can either win it, draw or lose. And then if you've won, say, the first match, you could go on to win the second match, draw the second match or lose the second match and so on. Now what is the second property for a binomial distribution? Well the second property is that we should have two outcomes in a trial, success or failure. Now in this particular tree diagram, in say this trial here, I haven't got two outcomes. The outcomes are winning, drawing or losing. Three outcomes. And you'll see in this trial here as well, I haven't got two outcomes. I've got three outcomes, winning, drawing or losing. So, this type of tree diagram is not suitable for a binomial distribution. So we'll remove that particular diagram and we'll have a look at another one. Playing two games of tennis. I've got a fixed number of trials n. I've got two trials, my first match, my second match. I've got two outcomes in a trial, success or failure, because in any match I can either win the match or lose the match. Now, what is the third property for a binomial distribution? Well, the third property is that trials are independent. And what does that mean? Well, if I look at this trial here, my second match, I've written this particular notation. And if you're not familiar with it, what it means is that Assuming that I won the first match, this is about winning the next match given that I won the first match. And the same down here. We've got for this one, if I won the first match, this is about losing it given that I won the first match. And what I have is that this trial is not independent of the first trial. Winning or losing in the second match depended on how I performed in the first match. So this particular type of tree diagram does not fit the properties for a binomial distribution. I need independent trials. So let's see what else we can come up with. What about this tree diagram where I throw a die and I spin a coin? I've got a fixed number of trials, two trials again. First trial is where 
I'm looking at throwing a six. And the second trial is where I spin the coin and I'm looking at getting ahead. So I have two outcomes in the trial, success or failure. I have either getting a six or not getting a six. I either get ahead or I don't get ahead and so on. So I've got two outcomes, success or failure. Success or failure. Are the trials independent? Well, of course they are, because when I spin a coin, it is unaffected by throwing a die. So what is the fourth property of a binomial distribution? Well, the fourth property is that the probability of a success, P, remains constant. Now, the success here was throwing a six, and it was one-sixth. And the success in this trial of getting ahead, the probability of getting ahead was a half. And you'll notice then that the probabilities of getting a success is not constant. It has changed from one-sixth to a half. So therefore, we see that the probability of success is not constant. So I haven't met this property for a binomial distribution. So I have to rule out this type of tree diagram. OK, so what are we going to have next? Well, we could have this one. And that is where I throw a die three times. First throw, second throw, third throw. And a success is if I score a six. So there are two outcomes. I either get a six or I don't get a six. The trials are independent because when I throw a die, the score that I get on the die is unaffected by the previous throw. So trials are independent. And you'll notice the probability of success P remains constant. The success being that I get a six. And you can see it remains at one sixth all the way through the tree diagram. So, I've met all the conditions, so therefore I have a binomial distribution. Now, when you have a binomial distribution, what I want to do is look at what we call a random variable x. I've let x be the random variable, rv for short, which is the number of sixes that I score in these three throws. And that random variable x could be 0. I don't score any 6s, as if I went down this path here. Not a 6 in the first throw, not a 6 in the second throw, not a 6 in the third throw. Or it could be that I score 1 6. And there's many ways of scoring 1 6. I could score it on the first throw, and then not on the second throw, but on the third throw, and so on. I could also score two sixes, and I could also score three sixes. I certainly couldn't score four sixes. So the random variable x is going to take on the values 0, 1, 2, and 3 for this particular type of problem. And we write this as x is distributed, and we write this kind of squiggly line here, binomially and we write a capital B here. And to describe this particular distribution, we have two parameters, two values that we put in here. And the first value is n, the number of trials. So for this particular binomial distribution, there are three trials. And the second parameter is p, the probability of success. And the probability of success is this one here, one sixth. So we mark that in as one sixth. So this is the notation that we would use in describing a binomial distribution. In general then, if x is the random variable that represents the number of successes in n trials, we describe this as x is distributed binomially and we write in brackets two parameters n and p. n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. 
So this brings us now to the end of this tutorial, but in the next tutorial I'm going to show you how we can develop this further and do calculations using this particular model.